All right, all right, all right, my friends. Welcome to another video here. My name is Bijan T. In case you didn't already know, or in case you haven't seen any of my other videos, and if you haven't seen any of my other videos, then that means you're new. So make sure you subscribe. That way you can be notified anytime I post a new video. And in this video here today, we're going to be going over, basically we're going to be going over all the trades that I did, all the swing trades that I did on my swing trading account over the last 30 days or over the last month. So basically going to be breaking down the account here, showing you what I did, showing you my trades, showing you my losses, and kind of explaining to you guys how I did this and how I make this stuff happen. And that's really all that it is. So it's going to be a little bit of a longer video than usual here. Make sure you guys do stay till the end because there's a lot of good information scattered without throughout it. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it here. Alrighty, so in this video, we're going to basically be going over, um, I don't know what you'd call it, like my whole swing trading account, I don't know, like history here for this last 30 days or like the statement or the profits and losses. Um, but that, that's basically what we're doing here is we're going to be going over the trades that I did on the swing trading account here over the last 30 days just to kind of show you guys again, you know, what's possible here when you're selective with your trades, when you actually have a strategy, when you know what you're doing. And I wanted to do this on the swing trading account because I know I already did one of these videos on the day trading account you know, showing like trades of day trading and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I wanted to do it here on the swing trading one for you guys real quickly. And just to kind of show you guys what I did over the last 30 days. And yeah, so uh, first of all, you guys are going to see here the dates. It shows January 1st to February 13th, which is, you know, today right now when I'm recording the video, you can see down here, it says, you know, 721 PM, 213. So uh, that, that's today. Um, the reason why I have it showing all of January instead of just like putting it to like January 13th or January 14th is obviously one, because there's always going to be that one person that, you know, creates that fear and uncertainty and all that in other people that says, Oh, well, the reason why he did it from the 14th to the 14th is because of this and because of that. Cause he didn't want you to see what was happening right before the 14th. I bet you he did this and he lost that and lost It's just, you know, people, uh, they live to try and put other people down. But anyways, so that's the main reason why, but there weren't any trades between January 1st and January 14th. Uh, the 14th was the first trade that I did on this account here. Uh, so I could put it on the 14th and it'll be the same thing, but I'm just going to leave it here for the sake of it. Uh, so that's that now. So it shows from January 1st to the 13th, but all these trades are literally, and it wasn't even until the 13th actually. Let me, um, hold on here. There we go. Um, what I'm going to do is, let me see. It was the X trade, I believe. So you can see here, the first, first trade I got in was on the 14th. You know, I'll expand all these other ones just to show you, you know, two, you know, two, two, you see what I'm saying? So the first trade was on the 14th. That was it. So this is basically what we did from the 14th until I believe, I know it's the 13th today, but until the 6th, let me just make sure. Yeah, until the 6th of February. So these are technically, I, I mean, the title of the video is like what I did within like 30 days or something like that, or like less than a month. But realistically, this was like three weeks, to be honest with you, three weeks of activity here, because I didn't do anything until the 14th of January on the swing trading account. And then after the 6th, up until the 13th, so almost like, you know, few days here now, I haven't done any trades either on the swing trading account. So just putting that idea out there. And again, all of this, the account started with like uh, 5,100 in it. So right now, as you guys can see, the profit, we're at almost $9,000, 8,900 is what we made. The current account value is at 14,000. And I wanted to make this video for you guys before I like reset my account uh, when I say reset my account, what I do is, um, let me, let me word this properly here. I always like to put my accounts back to square one. Uh, everybody trades differently. Everyone has a different style of trading. Everyone has a different, you know, style of money management, emotional management. And this is my style. Uh, before I get into it, I like to give an example to show you guys that there's 50 ways to make a record. There's multiple ways to make a record. There's multiple ways to do one thing. Just because you don't see what someone else might be doing doesn't mean that they're not doing, you know, something. So for example, we all know how, how car dealerships work. Let's talk about used car dealerships. So a used car dealership will go and buy a car for $10,000 and sell it for $13,000, right? That's what people usually expect. They make a profit like that. 
that's not the only way to make money by owning a car dealership. Some car dealerships will buy a car for $10,000 and sell it for $10,500. And then people will wonder, well, wait, how do they make much money if, you know, they're only $500 per car? You know, they got to pay their rent, their bills, their salesmen, blah, blah, blah. How do they do it? And the fact of the matter is maybe that particular company trades on volume, meaning they'll sell a lot of cars for those lower prices so they can make a small amount of profit on them. So, you know, their, their whole theory is volume. They'll sell a lot of cars for that small profit. Or there's a completely different model where they buy the car for like 10000 and sell it for like, you know, 10200 or 10500 or whatever. Very, very small margin there. And what they're doing is they're not trying to make money on the car. They're actually the finance company. That's what their business model is. They're a loan company, basically. They want people to get loans from them so they can make money on the interest. So what these people do is they, they kind of put up a front as a car dealership. They'll buy these cars for, you know, a cheap price, and they'll sell the cars for a cheap price to get people in the door to get people to buy these cars with their loans, with their financing. And that's how they make their money. You see, so I just laid out three different ways that a car dealership can make money and have a different business model. While most people usually only look at the first idea or maybe they think of the second idea of the volume, but most people don't really think of the idea of, wow, they're just a finance company just using these cars to get people to use their loans. Okay, cool. So that's what I'm trying to say is everybody does things differently. The way I approach the market is different. Some people come into the market to try and make millions and try to get rich off of one trade. I don't do that. Some people come in to try and, you know, build a small account. Maybe they want to put a few thousand in and turn it into a few hundred thousand. That's not what I do either. What I like to do is I like to come to the market for a paycheck. That's the way that I look at it. So I come to the market every day, every week, every month for a paycheck. That's how I do it. So I'll come in and I'll try to make, you know, a thousand a day or, you know, a certain amount in a month or in a week. Or, you know, I'll try to like, for example, 10,000 in a month, let's just say. And that's how I do it. And then I reset my account because I notice that I start to act differently. I start to trade a little bit differently when my account gets above like ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. So part of trading, I always tell people, if I were to write a book on trading, it would be a hundred chapters. Chapter one through 11 would be the actual strategies and chapter 12 through 100 would say emotional discipline. Learn how to manage your emotions. This is part of my emotional discipline. I know myself. I know I start trading differently when I get to a certain account value and all that kind of stuff when I have a certain amount of money in my account. So I reset my account. That's how I usually do it. So I usually like to keep my accounts between three to $6,000. That doesn't mean you have to do that. Everyone can be different. You know, like I say, 50 ways to make a record. And I like to just reset my account once it gets above 10 to $15,000. So I'm usually resetting my account every two weeks to every month. Um, so yeah, that, I'm not trying to build my account. I'm just trying to do this for income, for a paycheck. Now my checking and savings accounts grow, but again, that's not the goal here. So that's why, just in case anyone wonders, well, why do you reset your account? Why not just use the money to do this and make more and more and more? Because I have my own strategy. My strategy works for me. Consistency is what works for me. Consistency is key. So that's pretty much that. So I wanted to make this account uh, video for you guys before I reset the account and then it all goes away. And then, you know, I'm sitting here with 4,000 in the account showing an $8,000 profit. And then people are like, oh, well, what about this? Well, what about that? You never know people these days. Um, so, and just to kind of reiterate this for you guys, it is 8,929. So 8,929 plus the 5,100 it started with, 1429. 1429. There we have it. So now what I want to do is I want to kind of just do a breakdown of all this for you guys real briefly here. Now that I kind of did my ranting and my talking, um, like I said, I wanted to do this video for you guys before I reset the account. And I've been wanting to do this video for you guys for a couple days now. I've just been a little busy with a few projects that I've been working on. Uh, but the beautiful thing about it is that no matter what, no matter how busy I am on any other project or whatever it is, look, I'm still making money trading. This is why I love trading because, you know, even if you can't be there on a daily basis to trade, hey, you can still make money. Hey, if you don't want to swing trade because the market is doing something different and it's not really a swing trading situation, then hey, you can always do something different. It, you know, you don't even have to be there every single day looking at it. Um, you know, and I'm just saying, imagine, imagine if you work at a job or you go to school or even if you're trying to start a business or build your own business or whatever it is. Imagine if you can make an extra $9,000 each month just because 
you know how to click a few buttons at the right times. This is why they say an investment in knowledge pays the best interest because you you invest in learning something and look at what it does for you, you know, um, regardless if that investment is time, money, or both, you know, however it is, but I don't want to get sidetracked here. So what I want to do is do a little breakdown of all these things for you. Now, while I'm breaking this down, I want you guys to focus on a few things. The main thing I want you guys to focus on is number one, my ratio of wins to losses. Look how many times I win and look at how many times I lose. I want you to look at the consistency here because that's key for trading. I want you to notice how I win more often than I lose, and I also want you to notice how I make more money when I win than the amount that I lose when I lose. And I also want you guys to take note of how selective that I am with your trades. This is why I say you don't just go out throwing random trades here, random trades there. No, you have to have a strategy. Only get into trades when they line up with your strategies. So let's look at how many trades I have here. First of all, if you see a plus next to it, that just simply means there was either more than one order or I traded that particular thing more than one time. So let's take a look at how many trades I did here. We did, this is one trade. This is one trade. This is also one trade, one trade. So that's four. Five, that was one trade there. And then this X one is the one that has multiple trades. So from the 14th, we exit the trade on the 28th. So everything that I basically did between that time frame is this trade. I got in on the 14th, added on the 15th, added on the 22nd, added on the 28th, and sold them all on the 28th. So this is one trade right here. Then here's another one. And then here's another one. So that is one, two, three, four, five six, seven, eight trades that we did here over 30 days. Well, I mean, realistically, yeah, 30 days, because let's just say from January 14th till February 13th today, this is all I've done. This is all I have done. So in 30 days, there's eight trades that I did and I only lost one of them. This is why I'm saying, guys, this is how you should trade. You need to have consistency. You need to have, you know, an edge, something that works for you, something that works more often than not. You know, you got to learn. This is my, my whole point. So eight trades, one loss. And the funny thing is people are always try to say, oh, well, he doesn't post all of his losses. Yes, I do. It's just I'm sorry that I don't lose as much as you would want me to, you know. Uh, just because you lose a lot of money doesn't mean that I do. It doesn't mean everyone else does, you know. Some people actually, you know, know what they're doing. They learn. They take the time. They were willing to invest in their knowledge. So let's go look at what the percentage is. I won seven out of eight trades. So that's an 87.5 rate. We're, we're just going to call it 88% win rate. I'm going to just round it up there. We're rounding up, guys. So I have an 88% win rate. Making almost $9,000 here. $8,900. The account had $5,100 in it 30 days ago. And this is only eight trades. The, the point that I'm emphasizing, the fact that it's eight trades, is because I want you to understand this, how you, you have to be selective. Don't just go throwing a million things out there, uh, you know, hoping for the best. Uh, and again, an $8,900 profit. And this is with commissions all taken into account. Because I know there's going to be somebody, that, oh, well, you didn't take into account commissions. Yeah, they, they're taken into account here. Don't you worry. Um, this account, I get better commission rates than on the other one that I did. Uh, but don't worry, that's not the whole topic of this lesson. I have, for my master class students, I have a lesson that teaches them how to get cheaper commissions and all of that. And literally, I've had people tell me like, hey man, just by you helping us get the lower commissions, literally paid for the course. Like the course paid itself off just by the amount of money they saved in the commissions. So before I get sidetracked here again, let me you know, wrap this idea up here. So we're at an 88% win rate here. I'm trying to compare it to the other video that I did, uh, the 10x video, where I did the day trading small account challenge one, uh, and the account was up over a thousand percent by the end of it. That was I had about an 80, I think 82 percent win rate in that one, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you guys can go back and watch that video if you want. So again, I'm just trying to emphasize consistency. 
The day trades were consistent. The swing trades were consistent, both over 80%. I mean, the swing trades are almost over 8 I mean, they're all 88%. And the funny thing about it is that this actually wasn't supposed to be a loss, this uh, AA, this Alcoa trade. Uh, I got into this one on the 1st and was out of it on the 4th, and I got faked out a little bit. It was a fake out. It happens to all of us sometimes, you know, and I I'm kind of happy that this loss happened. The reason why I'm happy that this loss happened is because if this loss wasn't there, to be completely honest with you guys, I probably would not have made this video because there's so many people out there that are just so skeptical that I, I can guarantee somebody would be like, no, it's impossible to have a 100% win rate. And I don't like to deal with all that nonsense. So if, if that loss wasn't there, I probably wouldn't have even made this video because um, it makes it look too good to be true. But now that it's there, I'm, I'm okay with making the video. So I'm kind of thankful that that loss happened. But even that one, it wasn't supposed to be a loss. Um, yeah, but now that we focused on the consistency and the selectiveness, what I also want you to, want you to focus on is the risk management here. Notice my loss is $100. Let's give you guys the benefit of the doubt. I'm, I'm a very fair person. I'm not going to take my biggest profit. I'm not going to say, oh yeah, look at this one was a $2,200 profit. So I lose a hundred and I make 2000. No, 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 no. I'll give you guys the benefit of the doubt. Let's say every time I'm wrong, I lose a hundred. And let's say every time I'm right, we'll pick the smallest profit. 600. So I lose a hundred. I make 600 when I'm right. I win more than I lose. I win more often than I lose. This is how you become a successful trader, guys. Consistency. Don't chase big profits. Don't go chasing, oh, I want to make 10000 today. I mean, you can. I'm not trying to say you can't. I'm just saying you shouldn't start with that mentality. I didn't start trying to make profits. Like, literally, I promise you guys, I wasn't even making $100 at a time when I was, when I was first starting. But we work our way up slowly but surely. You stay alive in the game. So that you can grow. You want to live to see another day. You don't want to wild out and try and catch a big move and then end up destroying yourself and having to lose all your money and having to save up again just to kind of, you know, trade one more time. So that means that for every hundred I lose, I make $500. That's a five to one risk to reward, guys. Let's just say it's a two to one. Let's say that for every hundred I lose, I make 200, which obviously isn't the case here. You guys can see it. But let's just say, so if you're right 80% of the time, not even 88, we'll round down for you guys. How about that? I'm just giving you guys as many benefits of the doubt as possible. If you're right 80% of the time, let's not even, let me just give you guys more benefits of the doubt. How about that? Let's say you're only right 70% of the time. Okay. That means you win seven out of 10 trades. So if every time you win, you make, let's say, $2,000, and every time you lose, you lose $1,000, and I'm just using these same ratios. You know, I could say, instead of 100, we could say 1,000. Instead of, you know, 600, we could say 6,000. Instead of this, we could say 10,000, and we can say 60,000 here. It's all just for the simplicity of calculations here that I'm going to use these numbers. I'm going to just use 1,000 just for the sake of simplicity here. Um, you know, if you're right 7 out of 10 times, and you have a risk management strategy that makes you win $2,000 every time you win or lose $1,000 every time you lose. Again, I'm not even trying to say you make $1,000 or win $5,000. No, 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 no. I'm trying to give you guys the benefit of the doubt here. So you win 7 out of 10 trades. So 7 trades you win. And you win $2,000 every single time that you win. You win $2,000 every time you win. You won 7 trades. Do the math. That's $14,000 that you made. Okay, you're still going to lose, right? You're going to lose three out of the 10 trades. Well, as long as you have that risk management and the discipline to risk to, to respect that risk management, then the other three times that you lose, you're losing $1,000. So you made 14 on the seven that you won. Then you lost $1,000 each on the three that you lost. So you lost 3,000. 14 minus three, guys, you're still making $11,000. That's with a 70% win ratio. So the key is you need to win more than you lose. You do this by having an edge, having a strategy, having an understanding, only getting in on trades that line up with your strategies. And then you have the risk management that you tie in with that. And that's how you have long-term success with trading. So if it's a 60% win rate, 
You're winning six out of 10 trades. You make 2,000 every time you're right, you lose 1,000 every time you're wrong. So six trades, you make 2,000 each, six times two, that's 12,000 you made. Sure, you're going to lose on four of the trades and you're going to lose 1,000 each time. That's a $4,000 loss. So you made 12,000 loss for, you still made $8,000. Now I had somebody that tried to argue with me once and they said, I don't know what they said. For, well, actually, let me do one more example of a 50-50. Imagine if you're 50-50, guys. You have no clue what you're doing on the market here, right? No edge, no strategy. You buy a stock. Either it goes up or it goes down. So your odds are 50-50 of being right. As long as you have this risk management, meaning every time you're right, you can make the 2,000. Every time you're wrong, you lose 1,000. Five out of 10 trades, you win. Five out of 10 trades, you lose. So five you're making 2,000, five, you're losing 1,000. So five times two is 10,000 you made. You're going to lose on five trades. You lost 5,000 there. You're still making 5,000. You see what I'm saying, guys? I'm trying to give these examples so you guys can understand. Like even if your trading strategy suck, you can still make money. Now, somebody tried arguing with me once saying, ah, well, you know, not everyone can be, you know, have an edge in the market. What if they're just really bad and they're only right 40% of the time or they're only right 30% of the time? My response was, okay, that's fantastic. Because if you're right, let's say only 30% of the time, that means you're wrong 70% of the time, right? So that means every time you think the stock is going to go up, only three out of 10 times it does that. And every time you think the stock is going to go up, seven out of 10 times it goes down. So just flip your strategy around. So anytime you think of getting the stock to go up, well, hey, get it to go down then. Anytime you think the stock is going to go down, well, then get it to go up then. Now you just flipped your, your ratios. Now you're 70% right, 30% down. You see what I'm saying, guys? It's all numbers. You just have to have the right mentality and the perspective to look at it like that. See what I'm saying? So even if you suck, you can still flip it and still make money. Uh, but again, I don't want to get too stuck on that idea there and start rambling too much. So the point is behind all this, is that you guys need to learn. I did eight trades. I had it calculated here. Here, the percentage calculator. 8,929 is what we made. So 8,929 is what percent of the 5,000 that we started with. The account is up. In pretty much three weeks, over eight trades, we're up 178%. Let me just do the 5,100 because there's always that person out there. We're still up 175%, guys. And this isn't me doing a small account challenge or any challenge or anything like that. This is just me trading the way I normally do. And this is on my swing trade account. This isn't counting all my day trades too that I do on my day trading account. So just, just observe is what I'm trying to say, guys. Imagine in one month, if you have $5,000, and I'm sure the majority of you guys watching this video either have $5,000 saved or can save $5,000. Guys, it's not that hard to save $5,000. Go If you have to get a job, get a job. Um, but, you know, save a few hundred dollars a week. Save $200 a week. I mean, even $200 a month if you have to. Either way, there's a point you can start. And you don't have to start with $5,000. You can start less. Go watch my small account challenge. I literally took the account from $200 up to like 2000 something. I don't know what it was. I don't remember. But go watch the video. So... But I'm just saying, imagine if you started like this, you, you have $5,000. Again, you don't need the 5,000 to start. And some people think you even need $25,000 or more to start. That's not true either. You don't need $25,000. Look at me. I'm over here doing what I do with 14,000. All my accounts usually have between three to 6,000 in them. I usually reset them once I get to 10 to 15. So I never have 25,000 or more in my, in my account, but I'm always able to day trade, swing trade, any kind of trade as many times as I want. Again, it's all knowledge. You learn. So in one month, look at what we did. And this is with minimum effort, effort, guys. This is eight trades right here. Like, come on, it doesn't take that. It's not that hard to do eight trades, you know? That's like two a week, technically. So let's say we did only half of this in one month. I'm sure a lot of you guys can live on $4,000 a month. I can live on $4,000 a month. I own my properties and I own my car, so I don't have any major payments. And even if I didn't, I can still live on $4,000 a month, you know? Like right now, the only expenses that I have are really my car insurance, my gas bill, water bill, electricity bills, and then just food, really. All of that doesn't equate to $4,000 a month, guys. That's like maybe $1,000, maybe $1,500 if I'm wilding out. 
Imagine if I had rent, throw an extra 2000 there. So I spent 1500 on my bills and my food, and then $2,000 on rent, let's say. That's 3500 there. You, you see what I'm saying? That, that's, you, sorry, I'm pretty sure you guys can live on 4000 a month. And that's me saying cut this in half just because I love giving people the benefit of the doubt. So, I mean, my mom was able to support me and my brother while making only 3000 a month. She was only making $3,000 a month when I was growing up. And me and my brother both live with her and she was still able to pay the rent and everything. Obviously, it wasn't easy. It was a struggle. And that's partly why I'm so hungry to be successful. It's because I've seen the bottom. I know what it's like. I don't want to be there. It's not fun. I don't want to have to go through a whole nine to five job for my through my whole life. That's what my mom had to do. She worked at the Department of Motor Vehicles for over 20 years, guys. Oh my God, it was terrible. She was real stressed out. It's not fun. But anyways, um, that's besides the fact. I don't want to start talking about my life here now. So imagine guys, you can save up $5,000 and then imagine you can make $8,000 or $9,000 in a month passively, you know? And I call this, this swing trading account, I call it my passive income because I usually use like my day trading account as like my main income. So this is just like extra income on top of my extra income. You see what I'm saying, guys? So it's all, I always tell people, it's not about what you make. It's about what you do with what you make. You know, I save all my money and then I put them into my properties. So even then it's like more passive income. You see what I'm saying? But I, I, this isn't a real estate video. I'll make another one of those in another time. Um, so just to wrap this up, guys, you don't have to be in a trade at all times. Be selective with your trades. I did eight trades over one month. I didn't get into a million at a time. Be selective and only take trades that line up with your strategies. I haven't been in a trade for like five days on this account, maybe a little longer, but it's okay. Maybe I'll get in one tomorrow. Maybe I'll get in one next week. I'm not going to just get in one for no reason. I'm going to get in one because it lines up with my strategies. So just to recap, guys, we're up 170% here on the account. Ratios. Notice the ratios. We're at 87.5 win rate here. Notice how much I lost. Notice how much I win when I win. Notice how often I win. Notice how often I lose. And again, like I said, this one shouldn't have even been a loss. I got kind of like scared out of it. I'd be at 100% if, if, you know, that loss didn't happen. But then I prob probably wouldn't have made this video for you guys. So, because, you know, there are always people would say something. Oh my God, no, it's Photoshop. I'm like, no, it's not Photoshop. We're actually here. It's like an actual web page, you know. Um, but that's pretty much that. So we'll wrap it up here, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I don't want to ramble too much here. As always, if you guys want to connect with me more or learn how I do all this stuff, you guys can always visit our website. I'll put the link in the description. And yeah, we'll wrap it up here, guys. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter, who's Bijan T. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button. And I'm curious of who watched this all the way to the end because this was a really long video. So if you watch this, make sure you comment here and say, knowledge is money. I, I, that's my main saying for this week. Knowledge is money. Comment that if you watch this till the end, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.